Hey, we want to welcome you back into the 53rd Avenue Wednesday night digital Bible class. We are so glad that you're joining us. Uh, it, it is awesome that you are here. Um, I'm obviously still not Lon, and so it's uh, going to be me again tonight, and we are really hopeful that he will be clear to return to the office by next week, uh, but we'll continue to pray for that. He is doing very well. Uh, many of the folks that we've been praying for uh, are, are feeling much better, and so we're really excited about that, uh, and we look forward to uh, having Lon and several of the others back with us hopefully very soon. Uh, and so uh, stay tuned for that, but uh, in the meantime, I'm glad to be here to, to open God's Word with you. And so uh, we're going to start with some prayer time, encourage you to throw any prayer requests that you have into the chat, and I will be back in just a few moments to lead us in prayer together. We'll see you in just a few. this time, let's go to God in prayer. Father Almighty God, we thank you so much for another opportunity to gather together uh, through these digital means, uh, to look at your word, to uh, find ways that we can better apply what we read in it, the, the plan that you have for us in this world. Father, you reveal so much of your character in your word, and Father, we thank you because you are the awesome God, the creator of all things, uh, the I am. And, and Father, we uh, are just thankful because we know that through Jesus we can be called your children, that we have received forgiveness, and the, we are day by day the recipients of your, your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we pray that you would continue to watch over us. Father, our prayer is for protection from the pandemic. Father, for healing that may be, for, for those folks that may be facing it right now, for quick relief that this, this pandemic would come to a, a quick end. Father, we pray as well that you would be with those that are uh, struggling with other things during this time, whether it's the difficulty of grief during the holiday season, uh, feelings of isolation, maybe they're struggling with doubts, whatever they may be dealing with, Father, we ask that you would strengthen them and be with them. And Father, empower us as your people to find ways to meet their needs and to encourage them through your power. And Father, all of that goes to your glory. And we, we hope and pray that your name is glorified on this earth. 
by your people, by the people of the world as, as your greatness is revealed day by day. Father, for those that may have been mentioned in the prayer requests or those situations that may have uh, been shared right now, Father, we ask that you would work in those uh, situations so that, that good may come about, that healing may result, uh, that, that, that you would work those things uh, out for good for those folks. Father, we pray as well right now that you would just continue to uh, guide this church family. Uh, Father, keep us close in, in spirit, even if we can't always be close in person. Father, help us to remain in your word, to dwell upon it, to meditate upon it. And Father, we pray as well that, that, that you would strengthen us through this avenue of prayer, that we, we know we can bring our petitions to you, Father, that you long to hear from us. And we just hope and pray uh, that, that we will fully commit to uh, that avenue of communication, the blessing that we have, that we can speak directly to you. Father, we again thank you for this time of study. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we're so glad you're joining us tonight. We are excited to open up God's Word again. And, and tonight we're going to be in the book of Romans. I encourage you to turn there. Uh, We've kind of been just chaining together lessons, uh, not really intending it to be a series, but it's kind of become a mini series as we've gone through. Uh, we talked about uh, the danger of comparison a couple of weeks ago, and we talked last week about jealousy and the danger of it taking root in our heart. And we, with both weeks, we talked about things that, that we can do, actions we can take uh, to hopefully prevent us from falling into the trap of negative comparison, the uh, criticisms and the the overall negativity that comes with that, as well as jealousy, which of course can uh, sap our strength and our faith and, and cause all kinds of issues. And so we encourage you to, to take action, to uh, be, be bold and proactive in facing those difficulties uh, and in addressing them in your life. And so tonight I, I thought we would go even maybe a step further uh, and, and look at other things that we know that we ought to live into that hopefully will help us from falling into some of those same traps. And so once again, I hope that this lesson is practical for you, uh, that as we uh, look at these scriptures tonight, that we can see some things that we can do our best to live into, to pray about, um, and some places that we can return to in the Word when we may be struggling. So, uh, I think almost all of us have had moments in our life where we've uh, said, you know, if only I was this, or if only I were this, or if only I could do this, then... And we've created what are called conditional statements. If I can do this, then I can do this. If I am like this, then this will happen. Uh, and often we get to being wishful in a way that's probably uh, not going to be healthy for us in, in our work, in our ministry. right? And I do hope that you understand that you, as a follower of Christ, have ministry that's been given into your hands by God to do. There is good work before you to do in Christ Jesus. And so, uh, you know, when we struggle with a question like that, and again, it could be anything, but we probably all had that moment. Man, if, if only I was, you know, a little bit more well-spoken. If only I had been bolder, I probably would have gotten that, that promotion. Ooh, if I was a little bit more aggressive and forceful, I probably would have gotten a raise. If I was just a little bit more attractive, I would have been selected uh, or, you know, she would have said yes when I asked her out. We, we get into this place where we can do that and, and we can really begin to devalue who we are. And I want to remind you tonight that not only uh, are you fearfully and wonderfully made, but you're made in God's image, right? So, so uh, you aren't junk, right? You weren't miscreated. You, you, you are created for a special purpose. God knew who you were. He knows the number of hairs on your head. And so I hope that that fills you with an understanding that, that God has given you a special place in this world and a special ministry to perform. And he's created you for that purpose. Now, it's not always clear what that ministry is, and that's sometimes a day-by-day -day challenge, isn't it? But I think we can take confidence in knowing that there is good work for each and every one of us. I do want to encourage you to find ways to continue to grow. And so as we get into the Word tonight, we're going to see that 
this is not an invitation to say, you know, I'm just going to accept myself with all of my flaws and it's just, it's just all good. I'm going to do whatever I want. In fact, the overarching message of Romans is, no, we're not going to continue to sin just because grace is here, just because we have forgiveness. Of course not. We're going to try to live better. And I also recognize that as we live and grow day by day, we do gain additional skills and talents. And so sometimes the, if only I were, you know, uh, more fit, I'd be able to uh, actually uh, accomplish this thing, right? Uh, I remember talking to somebody one time that their, their goal in life was to get, uh, to recover from surgery. They had, had a recent surgery to recover from surgery so that they could go on a mission trip. Um, that, was, that was their huge goal. And, and I think about things like that. If, 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 if only I were you know, fully recovered from the surgery, I would be able to go on this mission trip. That's maybe a positive use of, of a conditional statement. Um, but I don't want you to set these up in such a way that you create unrealistic, unfair expectations for yourself, and then as a result, do nothing. Right? If you wait around until you're the best Bible class teacher to start teaching Bible class, you will never be a Bible class teacher. That's, you know, that's just not how it's going to go. Uh, if, if you wait around to be the best preacher that this you know, nation has ever heard before you go into ministry, you will never become a preacher. It'll never happen. If you wait until conditions are perfect to bring up Jesus with that family member, with that neighbor, uh, with the stranger, whoever it is, if you wait till that, that perfect moment, if, if only conditions were perfect, you will never do it. Uh, Winston Churchill once famously said, you've probably heard this before, perfection is the enemy of progress. And sometimes I think we let our perfectionism, some of us struggle with this, I, I myself, I, I sometimes read, proofread an email about six times before I send it. Um, so, so perfectionism can lead us to a place where we don't move forward. And I want to encourage you to start right where you're at, to grow, but to do it. <laughs> Go for it. And, and let's try to serve God in that way, serve mankind in that way, and Lord willing, expand the borders of the kingdom through the power of God. And that's what it's all about. So let's, let's jump into the word. Romans chapter 12 specifically is where we're going to start this evening. Uh, and, and I'm excited to read this with you. And so Romans chapter 12, and, and I'm going to pick up in verses 1 and 2 reading for you. Uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what, what is that, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, so there's several things here, and, and, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds with it, because we'll, we could probably preach a sermon just from a couple of points here, right? And so that's not what we're here to do tonight. And so we're not going to try to do that. But I do want to point out, we talk about living sacrifices. And, and that's what we're called to. In Christ, we're called to be living sacrifices. And so I believe, and I think the Bible bears this out in several different passages, that, that we will choose to give our lives somewhere, right? Every day I make choices about how I spend my time, the things that I you know, consume, the way that I behave, all the things. And, and at the end of the day, my 24 hours is the same as your 24 hours, and we have, that's all we have is it's in the day, is 24 hours. Everybody has the same, and we have to choose what we do with it. And so ultimately, we're sacrificing a day of our lives each day. But who are we sacrificing for? I think there's many noble things that we could sacrifice toward if we wanted to, right? Uh, many of us make sacrifices on behalf of our family. You know, we, we give of our time in a way that we maybe wouldn't if they weren't blood kin, right? I hope that we make sacrifices uh, for our church family, right? When they're in need or, or, or when there's an opportunity for them, that we would, we would do that. And, and, and obviously, all of these things, the overarching um, sacrifice that we ought to be making is for God. That as we are living our lives, and, and that could be in service to all those people we just named, in service to your community, it could be in teaching. It could be all these different things that we do to glorify God. It could be being the best that you can be at your occupation, right? Working as if toward the Lord. And so there's a lot of ways that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. But I encourage you to think day by day about that. Pray about that. 
Lord, help me to be a sacrifice for you today, a living sacrifice. I'm not laying down my life, but I am giving the best of my life in service to God. Often, I think, if we're being honest and we you know, really start to think things through, often we are giving our best somewhere else. That's a struggle for, for Christianity, for Christians in general, right? Is that sometimes we get our priorities all mixed up. And I want to challenge you to, to reevaluate where you're at or evaluate for the first time. I'm not sure how often you've done this. Uh, to take a moment and do that because often, again, we just get our priorities out of whack. And whenever we do that, we're going to struggle in our service to, to, to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. In our service to God. Going further into verse 2, and, and this is something I really want to draw out for you. I encourage you to find ways to trans, have your life transformed by God. And the Bible reads there, by renewing your mind. Put another way, it's, it's about how we think about things. And to a degree, thoughts will pop into your head, you know, unannounced, right? So, you know, sometimes you're suddenly like, wow, I didn't even know, I wasn't trying to, but I am thinking about whatever this is. It's kind of like the old joke is, if I say elephants, most of you are going to think for a moment about elephants, right? That idea just pops into your head. Now, I put it there, uh, sorry about that, uh, but, but, right, it pops into your head. But what I have found is, the things that I dwell upon are often dictated by the things that I choose to put into my mind, right? If I choose to uh, watch uh, ESPN or Fox Sports or you know something like that all day, I've got the channel going 24-7, then there's a very good chance that what's in my mind, what I'm dwelling on, is going to be sports-related. If I'm watching CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, one of these news channels, outlets, I'm probably going to be talking about current events. I'm probably going to be thinking about what's going on in the world uh, in politics or whatever the case may be. If I'm finishing up a novel, you know, that's what I'm probably going to be dwelling upon. It's going to be in my thoughts. And so if you want to transform your thoughts, transform what you're putting into your mind. Right? I think this is a pretty straightforward. And one of the things that we absolutely need to be putting into our mind is God's word. Right? If we're not in it daily, then, then we're not allowing God to speak to us. And if God's isn't the loudest voice in the room, there's a danger that he may get drowned out. Right? Sometimes, and I don't mean this literally, but sometimes we're, we're looking for, for God's voice and we're like, man, is God going to speak and reveal what I should do? And, all this? and we didn't bother to even open up his word. You know, uh, I read a joke a few years ago about uh, a ministry team that was praying around a table asking for, for God to reveal their, their next uh, ministry, and not a one of them had their Bibles open. It's kind of kind of a scary thing when you think about it, right? And, and so I encourage you to get in God's Word, but I also encourage you to, to spend time uh, dwelling on things that are good. I hate to say it, but there's a lot of garbage in the world. There's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of things that are not pure, that are not wholesome, uh, they're, they're not family friendly, if we want to call it that. Um, and unfortunately, we tend to just, man, we, we get super excited to dive right into that sometimes, right? And, and everyone's struggle there is a little bit different. Uh, but there's so often, you know, we're, we're trying to, to have the best of both worlds. And, and the reality is, is we're not to be conformed to this world. Man, why doesn't my life look different than all of my neighbors? Well, maybe it's because... You're watching the same programs. You're going to the same places. You're doing the same things. What, what did you expect to be different? No offense. <laughs> and so, so think about that. Uh, I didn't mean that ironically, but I guess it's, or as a pun, I guess there. But, but truly, take a moment to think about what it is that you consume on a regular basis, what it is that you do on a regular basis, and how that may be impacting the things you think about on a regular basis. Right? In this season, one of the things that I think has weighed heavily on a lot of people is that a lot of their thoughts have been given over to concern, to worry, to fear. Right? We've had a lot of things happen in the world, um, not the least of which is the pandemic that continues. Right, And, and I, I think there's a difference 
And it's a, it maybe it's a fine line between being cautious and concerned and allowing it to genuinely impact your thoughts day to day, even when you shouldn't be concerned, right? Um, and so I encourage you, take it seriously, of course, but, but don't allow it to wreck your day-to-day -day life in such a way that you can't sleep, um, that you, you, know, you can't even uh, you know, uh, function as a human being because it can easily happen. And so focus on what it is that you are thinking about. Think about your thinking. Let's continue now uh, in verse, verse 3. We're going to read several verses here now together, 3 through 5. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So deep spiritual stuff here, but I want to point out, point out just a couple, couple things for you. Number one is we need to approach what we do in the church and in ministry with humility. Right? That phrase is going to be used there later as well, right? To, to, to approach things as one who is humble in spirit. But then we also have to recognize that both good and bad, we're not made the same, right? My skills aren't your skills. Your skills are not mine. I was speaking to my mother the other day and, and, uh, and, and my wife was, was there as well and we were all kind of talking and <clears throat> I realized that I am pretty bad at visual puzzles. Um, my, my wife actually makes fun of me a little bit about it because I'm just, uh, I like to think I'm a, I'm a pretty sharp cookie sometimes, but, but that is not a skill that I have. And, and it, and it's made it where if I have to create anything three-dimensional, if I'm, you know, trying to cut a piece of wood or things like that, unless I measure precisely, I'm bad at visualizing it. I can't, mm, mm, nope, don't, don't ask me to build something. I'm miserable at it. Um, if I don't have the the instruction manual for the Lego set, we're all in trouble, you know, so it's, it's just a challenge for me. Um, but I love word puzzles. I love word play. Uh, and, and, and while there's, they're both puzzles, one clicks for me. I, I almost don't have to think about one, and the other is super difficult. Well, I also recognize that there's probably somebody that's tuning in right now that is exactly the opposite. You are amazing at, at, at building and visualizing and solving, you know, visual puzzles. And then the idea of having to write out directions for something is a complete nightmare. The idea of <clears throat> having to follow directions is a complete nightmare. Uh, but also then just the idea of, you know, to do a crossword is just, is, is work, not, not fun. And so, so when we say that, you know, that's a really interesting thing that happens. I want to extrapolate that out now. I want to spread that out to this idea that in the church, you're not going to necessarily be built for every type of ministry. I'm certainly not. Right? Uh, there are things I like to think that I do pretty well, and there's things that are a real struggle for me. Now, I want to be clear. I don't think we should be afraid of putting ourselves out there. Uh, but what I don't want you to do is to sit around and say, man, you know, one of the things I, I just love about Lon, who normally teaches, is that he has never met a stranger yet. When we go places and we're visiting people, he strikes up conversations with strangers. And I'm going to be honest about my life. I'm like, oh, I'm hi. You know, I don't, I don't know what to do, right? Because I'm not used to, to striking up conversation with random people. But he's excellent at it. it, it it's something that he just does. And I don't even think he thinks about it. That said, that is an amazing thing that Lon can do. And I do my best to when I, when I am given an opportunity to greet people and to meet people and to, to, to get to know them. That's, that's something I try to put myself out there to do. Even if it's not my greatest strength, I try to do it. But what I also recognize is I don't have to be as good at that as Lon, nor does Lon have to be as good at computers as I have to be for us to accomplish some things in God's kingdom. And I want you to start to think that way because sometimes we think, okay, if I'm not a preacher, if I'm not a teacher, if I'm not a, you know, if I'm not physically able to work at the food pantry, if I'm not, do I still have a role here? 
yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, we want you to be involved in, in the work of ministry at the 53rd Avenue Church of Christ. And we want you to find that place because we recognize that, that man, there are so many different functions for which we're built. Some of you have an analytical mind. Some of you are amazing at managing things. Some of you, you need a task given to you. And that's awesome too, right? And so I want to, to encourage you to continue to seek that out as best you can, but also to cherish the thing that God has given into your hands to do. Sometimes we look and we rank um, work of the church. Oh, that person served publicly, so they're, you know, they're up here. And, and me, I just, you know, I just write cards to the sick. That's, that's kind of all I do. Or, you know, I'm kind of homebound, so I just call some people and try to check in on them. Let me tell you something. That work may be more important than anything I've ever said from the pulpit. That work may be more important than any, anything that I, I do in a public setting. And, and I'm not just saying that to butter you up. I'm trying to explain to you that, that the work of the church, we need everybody moving forward in God's kingdom together. We're all running the race, but we're running this race together. And so I encourage you to see yourself as a, as a member of that body. And I also encourage you as we read this to, to look out for those other members that may be struggling. Uh, maybe they're struggling with, with something health or whatever related, but I mean, they may be struggling to see the importance of their role. This is an amazing opportunity for you to encourage them and to assist them in, in, in getting involved and in, in getting uh, more bought into what it is that we do. And bought in is probably the wrong phrase. I hope you can forgive that. That's not really representative of it. Uh, I'm trying to think of a better way to say it. And yet the truth remains that, that God wants all of his uh, people, all of his children, uh, to, to be about the good work. Let's finish up tonight with, with a, a look at verses 6 through 8, a reminder of the gifts that we've been given. Having then gifts differing, according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering, he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I love the first part of verse nine, and I'm gonna just read the first sentence from verse nine now. Let love be without hypocrisy. So I encourage you, and there's a bunch more there, but we just for time's sake aren't gonna get into it. But, but I encourage you to, to, to think about that and to think about truly what your strengths are. It is not bragging to accept that you have skill in an area. Sometimes we sell ourselves short and who we're really selling short is God. Now there's also pride <laughs> that, it, that we can fall into and pride tells us that we're better at things than we think we are. I encourage you to not allow yourself to be, allow your actions to be dictated by pride, but through humility recognize that God has blessed you with some gifts. God has given you some talents and you may be the, the, the worker that got five talents, you may be the worker that got two, you may be the worker that got one, but the goal is to go out and use those talents. And so this evening, I, I encourage you to think about these things and to really, really take action in this way. I encourage you, if you don't know what your role is, if you don't know which part of the body you are, you don't know what your gifts and strengths are, let, let's talk about it. Give me a call, I'm sure call Lon, uh, who's going star crazy at home, give him a call. Uh, speak to our elders. Uh, we want to get you involved and in, in, in we will figure out what that place is. Um, we're always excited for good work in this place. And so it, it may look a little different right now with, with uh, the pandemic and COVID, but we pray that day by day, God is still providing opportunity for his people to do his will. Again, thank you so much for joining us. And in just a moment, we're going to have some discussion questions. I encourage you to jump in there. Uh, in the chat and, and join us for that time. And I'll be back in just a minute to, to wrap us up.
Again, we are so very thankful that you've joined us this evening. Uh, we hope that this has been a blessing to you this time. Uh, please continue to pray for our sick. Remember those that aren't with us for whatever reason. Lord willing, Lon will be back with you next week, and we will look forward to that time together next time. Uh, if not, I'll still be here. Uh, and so we hope you'll join us then. Uh, man, I, I'm just so thankful that you've been with us. Uh, and until next time, God bless, grace and peace, and we'll see you soon.